Hi, this is Pastor Todd and Katie Holmes from the River of Tri-Cities Church right here in Johnson City, Tennessee. And we want to welcome you. Thank you for watching this program today. Our prayer is that as you're watching, that you experience the touch of Jesus just as if you were sitting here in the service with us and yeah. God will meet whatever your need is. If you just ask him to reveal himself, his, his word, his will for your life, I promise you're never going to be the same. Expecting great changes in your life. Come and see us at 1005 John Exum Parkway right here in Johnson City. God bless you. In case you missed last week, here is a brief recap. Our thoughts, our reasonings, and our preset levels of comfort, those things that block us from going to the next level in what God wants to do, in us eating of the good of the land. God's knowledge is the truth, which is his ways. And anything outside of the ways of God is disobedience. And so he doesn't know that. He doesn't know how to, he can't give you direction outside of his word, outside of his truth. If you line yourselves up with the word of God and the blessing of the Lord will come upon you, it will rest on you. And people will continually see the blessing of the Lord on your life. Wow, God's continually blessing you. How does that happen? Consistent, continual obedience for you to be a blessing. God has a plan. So don't get in your head. Stay out of the gray matter when God speaks to you. Don't, don't take the word of God and then try, okay, let me try to figure this out. And let me think on this. And then I will put my spin on what God said. Don't do that. Because then you'll constantly be in trouble. And then when you don't do what God says and you're going back to God and you're saying, God, I got a problem. He says, you have a problem because you didn't obey me with the first thing I told you to do. Last week, I started talking to you about adjusting the settings of your mind. And, uh, and this is a series, one more. Uh, next Sunday also, I'll be finishing up this series on adjusting the settings of your mind. And I think it's very important as we're going into this new year that we get things right so that the year is not messed up. Amen. I don't want your year to be uh, just... All, all kind of confusing mess and everything like that. And so if we can deal with some foundational stuff here, um, then we can, we can set everything going in the right direction. And we, we have to do that. And I'm going to read three scriptures, bring it back, what I, what I started with last week, just kind of laying a foundation again, Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Set your mind on things where? above that's higher than you correct how many of you know what is above none of you are so tall that there's nothing above you amen spiritually none of us are so advanced that there's nothing above us and so when we have natural thinking how many of you have natural thinking sometimes my lord i hope i hope all of you would raise your hand how many of you understand you have a brain god gave it to you for a purpose amen you've got to use your brain it's, it's a good thing. Amen. It's a very good thing. Try it. Hallelujah. Um, but we have to set we, we, we're told here, Colossians, Paul talking to us, Christians, us believers, you, dude, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth, because it's, it's, it's a natural tendency to think down, to, to look downward. You, how many of you people, you, you pass them on the street, and the majority of people are not just looking up, they're not, they're not looking like this, or that most, a lot of people just walk like this. How many of you noticed that before? Amen. It's not because everybody's depressed. They just go, well, I'm watching where I walk. Okay, but in the spirit realm, you're not walking here. You're walking up here. And so we have to kind of change our perspective. God has things, and a lot of times we should be, there should be a spiritual aspect, a supernatural aspect of what, what we are doing in our lives, how to go to the next step. But we're always looking at things of the earth instead of looking above and listening, hey, God, how do I walk this out? He says, I've got a, I've got a higher level for you to walk this out at. Stop looking at everything according to the natural view. And then Isaiah chapter 55, verses 7 through 9. This is another familiar portion of Scripture for everybody here. Let the wicked forsake his way. Say wicked. Say, I'm not wicked. Did you tell the truth? Amen. Amen. I hope you did. And for those of you that are sitting on the sides that every once in a while I walk by you and I disappear, I'm still here. It's just the lights. They're called blinders. Hallelujah. And you know why? 
because you're sitting in line with them. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to make a few adjustments with those and everything like that. But, but I'm still here. Just look at the screen. Praise the Lord. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. The unrighteous and the wicked, it'd be the same thing. Why are they to forsake your own? Why are you to forsake those thoughts? Because they don't line up with the will and the plan of God. Okay? And so it's not, it's not the believer with the renewed mind. That's not who this is written to. This is talking to the person who is, who is walking in unrighteousness towards God. Okay? And God says, that's wicked. You might be, you might be in covenant with me, but you're still walking in wickedness and you're still walking in unrighteousness because you're doing things your way and you're thinking your own thoughts. You say, well, what's the problem? How do I get back on track? Write the next one. Let him return to the Lord. Return. Repent. That's what, that, that's what the, the word repent means. Return. Come back. And so you've got to go back. God said, Lord, forgive me for my squirrely thinking. For my for my stinking thinking. And I don't, I don't want to live that way. I don't want to follow after my own, my own pattern of thinking. Lord, show me your ways. And he says, and I will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I'll have mercy. I will have mercy on you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just going to say, yeah, we'll get it straightened out. Let's go in the right way. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Who's he talking to? The unrighteous, the wicked. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And so when we don't walk in the ways of God, God says, you know what, there's a higher plan. But when you're walking in the ways of God and you have set your mind on things above, that's not, that's not scripture to you. Amen. A lot of people, you know, they, 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 they love that verse and everything like that. But understand, just because you're human, you're not always walking there. Peggy, that's not you. Maybe it used to be you, but it's not you now. When you've, when you've made a judgment, and I'm just picking on her because she's on the front row. And you sit on the front row, I can pick on you. Second row too, and I'll even go to the back actually. But anyway, <laughs> this is, no place is safe. Hallelujah. I'll come everywhere. Amen. I'll go back to the sound booth. <laughs> but the thing is, this is that, that God wants us to, to walk in his ways. And so we can say, you know, you know last, week, last week you were a rascal. You were a scallywag. You were doing your own thing. You had to put the patch over your eye. Our mateys. I do my own thing, I tell you. No, you scallywag. Get rid of the patch and get rid of the grumpiness. Amen. Just walk in the ways of God. Just walk in righteousness. And then Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. A lot of times people are unclear. They're, their mind's in a fog because you're not even doing what God said to do. Commit your works. What do you do? Is it God, are you doing things God's way? Did God bless you and say, I want you to do this? And you do your own thing? And then you wonder, why am I not at peace in my mind? Why am I all confused? Why is, you know, I can't put things together because you're not doing things God's way. God can bless you. God, it's like we've got this, these... This precious couple here, God's blessed them with a new, a new uh, 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 business, same business, but new location and everything like that. So they're getting all that all set up and everything in another city and, uh, and another state. Hallelujah. And so, but this is the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and I'm just picking on them because they're on the front row. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the thing is this, the thing is this, that God will bless everybody. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll give you an additional business. He'll increase what you've done. But when he blesses you, you have to obey him and you have to do it the way he says. Because it's of him, it's not of you. If, it's, if you say, hey, I did all this, God says, keep going. Let's see how far you can go without me. But if you want my blessing, you can't just start with me. You've got to keep going with me. Let's walk this out together. And I will always be with you. I will bless you day in and day out. I will increase you. I will, I will surprise you with favor. Amen. Because those are the ways of God. I expect favor here in the church. I don't ask for it. I don't ask for ministerial discounts. Though that, that just irritates me. 
I'm a poor preacher. Can you please help me? Well, I'm not that person. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I don't consider myself in that way. Amen. A lot of people see themselves one way. This is the way you are. Well, I visualize myself as blessed. Hallelujah. And that comes out of my life. Because that's how I that's how I am. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's talk about how our thoughts affect our minds. You say, well, of course they do. That goes without saying. But people don't understand that. They think oh, my mind is just going to be absolutely fine. And you know, it's always going to be sharp and keen and I'll have a I'll have a great mind but I can think on and I can fill my mind with anything I want I can think any thought I want and it won't affect my mind think about that I can I can I can think any thoughts I want but it won't affect the productivity of my mind oh no that's not true oh that's not true amen everybody here has a mind you have a blessed mind actually but do you use it in the right way? Your mind will always believe, Lenore, your mind will always believe everything you tell it. Whatever you tell your mind, your mind will believe it. It's programmed that way. And so that's why you have to feed it faith. That's why you have to feed it truth. That's why you have to feed it love. You have to remind yourself, maybe, maybe I'm, just the, I'm just probably the weird one out here. Sometimes I have to remind myself to walk in love. It's, I know it's a weird thing. It's, it's with me. Probably nobody else here has ever had to remind themselves, you need to walk in love right now. Anybody else? You ever had at least one time you've had to remind yourself, thank you, Jesus, family. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I was getting looks. I was like, whoa, freaky. <laughs> this is not my group. Um, no, I'm serious. I was just, everybody was like, how terrible. She would have to remind herself to walk in love. You're a pastor. Whatever I tell myself, I believe it. I used to tell myself when I was little things, Todd, you don't like peas. Sure enough, I didn't. Sometimes my, my taste buds would tell me things too, though. And I believe that also. But the thing is this, is that whatever you tell yourself, you're going to believe, okay? And whether you like it or not, we're, in a, we're, we, we're living a battlefield. Our minds are a battlefield. Joyce Meyer talks, I guess, uh, wrote a book on the battlefield of the mind. And she, she coined a phrase, I love it. I love it. It says, where the mind goes, the man follows. Where the mind goes, the man follows. So the things that you think on is the direction that you're going to head in your life. You begin to think on stuff. And that's why the enemy wants to fill your life with all kinds of stuff. Just a little spurt of it. It doesn't have to be like the full episode. And see, he's captured so much of this generation these days with just little snippets of stuff, just five to seven seconds of It's inoculation after inoculation after inoculation of doubt, of unbelief, of, of garbage, of communism. Hey, man. They just sit there and they go through and you flip through Instagram and now it's picked up, and even the adults will do the same thing. You go on, you go on TikTok, you go on Instagram, and you can even go like on the reels on Facebook now, and everything like that. And before you know it, you have spent 30, 45 minutes, an hour going. And then, and then somebody looks at the clock and they're like, "Oh my gosh." What happened? Where'd all the time go? It's gone. But what did you feed yourself right at that time? Because what you fed yourself at that time, even though it was like little snacks, it's going to come out of you. It'll come out of you. And it's such a, it's such a, a conglomeration of all kinds of stuff. 
It's like you've got the TikTok casserole. <laughs> and then you wonder why people are like, ah, ah, ah. Right? It's like, what have you been feeding yourself? <laughs> what your thoughts are determines how keen your mind is. It's a different America that we have today than we had 20 years ago. Totally different America. A different mindset has taken over. And it hasn't gone in a good direction. I'll just tell you that. I'm here to help the millennials and the next generation. Amen. We want to reach them because they are who God wants to do great things through supernatural things and I see such incredible things in this millennial generation I want to tell you I see awesome things I see incredible things I see I see young men and young women who don't have any any regard for themselves because they have been put down and told they're stupid told they're unproductive confused about whether you're a guy or a girl get the book and you know just trying to figure out what in the world What's going on in my life? I want to tell you, God has such an amazing plan for you. Amen. 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 And my message isn't wasted on the, on the boomer generation. Amen. And so our focus here, our focus is here. And because of the age of my wife and I, we'll always attract boomers. But our focus is the next generation and the one after that. Amen. And you say, well, isn't that out of your comfort zone? I've always lived outside of my comfort zone. Everywhere I've traveled throughout the world doing missions and evangelism, it's always taken me outside of my comfort zone. It's not a comfort zone of mine to have an AK-47 put in my head and say, I'm going to kill you right now. That's not real comfortable. So I never chose nations to go to where the gospel was accepted. I'll go where they tell me, you preach the gospel, I'll kill you. Good. Well, we got a good challenge going on now. Because it's God against you. Amen. I like those odds. Just me and God. That's fine. I'm good. Well, we've got an army, and I've had it come out. The Assyrian army actually came against me one time. It's okay. God's with me. Hallelujah. He shows up in Syria even. Right in the middle of downtown Damascus. People getting saved, people getting filled with the Holy Ghost, miracle signs and wonders taking place. And the army comes in, they couldn't stop it. They got frustrated finally and left. Why? Because when God shows up, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. But you can't have fear in your mind. You can't have thoughts of that. You've got to get rid of that. That doesn't go here. This is what God said to do. No fear is allowed in here. No fear is allowed in here ever. Amen. Please stay tuned. The message will continue after this testimony. Last week you heard the men's prison ministry testimony. This week we have one from the women's prison. We have Kayla this morning. Come on, Kayla. Tell us what's been going on in the women's prison. So it's been absolutely amazing going in there, you know, every time that we go in. Um, so there's a mixture of ladies who are returning because they're hungry for the word and they're just like on the edge of their seats, almost like, you know, what are we gonna, what are we gonna hear today? What are we gonna learn tonight? And they're going back and they're bringing other people that wouldn't have come on their own to come and hear the gospel and they're egging each other on in the services like encouraging each other like okay this is what you need you know no listen to her and you know it's just it's amazing to see what's happening and for me the most significant thing that i've seen is that these ladies are walking through the process of forgiveness which is amazing like if i could have learned about the power of forgiveness earlier on in my christian walk like my life would be so much further but it's like these ladies you know they're 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 receiving the word of god and we get to the point and we're like okay you know we're going to pray for forgiveness against the people that have hurt you and so for them to sit there and go from uh uh 
I'm not forgiving them. You don't know to sitting there weeping and breaking down and crying and saying, I forgive the person that molested me. I forgive the person that abused me. Like it's literally life changing for these women that are in there. And so I know that there was a lot of ladies that you came and you got trained. And so um, actually after service, if you were um, in the training meeting with Sergeant Boggs and you haven't had an opportunity to come out to the prison yet, or if you have and you want to be more involved, I'm going to ask you to meet me right over here, right after service. We're just going to go ahead um, and make sure that everybody who wants to go has an opportunity. And it may sound funny, but it's not like, you know, fly fishing or anything like that. It's like, it's almost like you're just shooting fish in a barrel almost because they're so desperate for the word of God. They're so hungry for the touch of God. They're so desperate for something to be different in their life that they're like leaping into the boat. You just got to be there to catch them. And so if you haven't gone soul winning and you're nervous about it or you're not comfortable, like come out to the prison because it's like literally they're jumping for they're jumping in the boat for Jesus. They're like, yes, I want this. I need this. So it's an amazing way to go ahead and get started. And once you see like the women, they come in there with their face one way and they leave dancing and singing and hugging and asking for Bibles. Like it makes you addicted to bringing the gospel to people. So if you haven't gone and you've been approved, come see me. If you haven't gone and you haven't been approved and you want to also come see me because, you know, this is this is something that God has ordained. Um, back in the ladies uh, conference, um, the Lord told me, he's like, I've given you the prison. So it's time to completely take over that one. And then we're going to go to the next one and the next one. So we do need laborers. So if this is something that you're interested in, now's the time. Hallelujah. The fields are white. We need laborers to go and reap this harvest. There's a mighty harvest out there to reap. And the Lord wants to use your hands and your feet to reap that harvest. Amen. Now back to the message. And so you got this battle that's waging in your mind sometimes. And you have to remind yourself, my battle is not with flesh and blood. I can see this person, but they're not the issue. They're not the issue. If uh, Robert, step up here with me, please, real quick. So if Robert was here and I'd gone to, and he was the president of a nation. Let's just say, a, you know, a liberal wacky nation, okay? Let's just say like... <laughs> Canada or something like that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, and I'm going in and I'm going to preach the gospel and the president of this nation looks at me and he points his finger in my face. You got it, man. And he says, you can't do that here. You can't do that here. <laughs> I think I go, God told me to. And so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to obey God rather than man. Now, the, the, this person here who controls a lot of people, they say, we'll shut you down. I'm like, okay, you know, give it your best shot. Because as long as I'm doing what God's told me to do, I'm going to be fine. Unless I go to God and I say, okay, Lord, this thing has taken place. There's only been one time, only one time where God spoke to me and told me to do something differently. Only one time. In all the years of ministry where God told me, make a change. And the reason I made the adjustment is so that we could continue to go to that, the, take the gospel into that nation continually. So I didn't get blacklisted and kicked out. And so we made the change and God busted everything open for us. Amen. But it's, it's not the king, it's not the president. For the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Amen. But you've got to be bold as a believer and say, hey, listen, my, my war isn't with you, buddy. In fact, God loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. If you were to die right now, do you know for certain, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that you would go to heaven? Let me tell you something here. And, and you, just, you just go for it. Amen. Because even kings and presidents need the Lord. Amen. Thank you, president. You have to understand that God is in control, but he's in control through you. We just sang that in the song. I know God is in control. Well, how is he controlled? Through you. Not just some sovereign all of a sudden, you know, you, you, walk, in the, you walk in the scene and, and, you know, everybody bows to you and starts kissing your feet and everything like that. No, they, they, they might pull guns on you. Amen. They might slap you upside the face. I've had that happen many times also. Been mooned. Hallelujah. <laughs> Two in one time. Amen. <laughs> I 
You don't expect that. <laughs> Preaching a gospel crusade, and I was like, whoa, that person's face looks different. <laughs> They'd shave it, look better. <laughs> it's the rulers of the darkness of this world that your battle is against. Not against the people who pull a gun on you. Not against the people that slap you. Not against the people that spit in your face. I've had that happen too. You just keep talking. It's coming down your face. But the people that slap you, you just continue, my war is not with you. My war is not with you. And so people think they can get to me by saying things to me and trying to irritate me or giving me a dirty look. It affects me none whatsoever. The little texts that I get, the messages, the emails, they don't affect me one bit. I'm only doing what God tells me to do. And I'm going after the harvest that God says, this is your harvest. That's why God sent us here, to take a harvest of souls and to to establish his kingdom very strongly in this area. Not my kingdom, not my castle. I could really care less about myself. I've been to the hell holes of the world. And felt really, really very comfortable. In fact, more comfortable than I felt in a lot of churches. Because there's real need there. You go to some churches and everybody's fine. I'm good. I don't need God. Get hungry for God. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like that song. That one worship leader? I don't like their, I don't like their hair. <laughs> why, did they, why did they put that person on the team? They're like, the pastor's wife irritates me. That laugh. Oh. Just mess in love. I love your laugh. Hallelujah. And I've never heard anybody say that. Well, that one person, but they disappeared right after that. Um, no, I'm just. My wife has it. She has an infectious laugh. I love it. She begins to. She begins to laugh, and it's just. And, and I hear that around the house too. That's not a church thing. It's like all the time. Hallelujah. It reverberates in our house. It's a sound of laughter. It's a sound of love. It's a sound of peace. I love it. Hallelujah. So don't think, oh, that's who she is at church. She's that way all the time. Hallelujah. The battle takes place, though, in our minds. And if you want want to lower the stress level in your life, anybody here? You don't have to raise your hand. You want to lower the stress level in your life? Because stress triggers sickness. Is that right, Doc? Christine? Is that correct? Yeah emergency room doctor there it can spawn disease stress can and so it's good to not have that in your life and so if you want to lower the levels of stress in your life then you have to change what you think about what comes in and takes control of your thoughts you have to control what you allow to your mind to process you can't necessarily stop a thought from just popping in your head but you don't have to sit there and think about it for 30 minutes I have a lot of stuff that might pop in my head, but I was like, that's garbage. Get out of here. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to dwell on that. That might be a problem, but that's God's problem. God's got to figure that one out. Amen. We start to move forward with things, and all of a sudden I'll have a thought. Hell, yeah, that'll never work. You don't have enough money in the bank for that. I don't know. This is what God said to do. That's God's problem. Amen. I know as long as I do what God says to do, and I think his thoughts... Everything will turn out as God says it will turn out. Amen? So before the enemy can attack you with sickness and disease in your body, he's going to do it in your mind. Before he can attack you with that in your body, he's going to come against your mind. He's going to say, will you accept this? Or will you do something that puts you in a like unforgiveness, that puts you in a place where you do receive that attack bitterness unforgiveness and bitterness dries up the bones amen you can get cancer by holding unforgiveness in people you say well pastor todd i don't receive that word but i will keep the unforgiveness if you want to reject the word then get rid of the root that offends you at the word. 
If you're offended at the word of God, it's because there's something in you that the word is addressing. If you're offended at the word of God, there's something in you that needs to be addressed. Like if you got upset because I was talking about finances in church, there's an issue with you and finances. Amen. You say, well, I'm a giver. Yeah, but you're probably religious. And you're going to a religious mode. This shouldn't be done in church. Tell Jesus that, like I said. But if you hold people in unforgiveness... And you won't walk in love towards people. You hold things against people. Somebody told me, Pastor Randall, you know, he's rah, 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 rah. okay, well, whatever. Have you experienced that yourself? Do you have an issue? No. But somebody told me this. Well, whatever. Let it go. Let it go. You don't receive accusations against people. Amen. Don't receive accusations against people. Just give it to God. You know, the, the cheapest talk in the world is when you talk about other people. Amen. So just let that go. Just let it go. Let it go. You can control issues that are under, you know, in, in, your, in your field, things that, but you don't have to, you don't have to be calling, you know, people out and, and everything like that. And say, Amen. I didn't like that. I heard about so-and-so, and, -so and I, I heard this. Well, don't, don't go there. Because a lot of times, people can have issues, and you deal, you deal with issues. And it's just like maybe Pastor Sam and Sharon, they were, they were working through an issue. This is hypothetical, okay? They were working through an issue, and it was something that it, with, with somebody that I really didn't, I didn't know an awful lot about, but they were dealing with it, and and something was coming up against them. Maybe it was some of their family or something like that. And occasionally their family would come to visit them, you know, during the holidays or something like that. And they told me that, you know, we got, you know, pray, pray with us because, you know, we have this relative. Oh, you know who it is. And, you know, we're, we're constantly battling against us because this is, what's, this is what's being done. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I'll pray with you about that. But in my, so I pray, but then all of a sudden I have these thoughts like, what a jerk. What an idiot they have as a relative. Man, I don't like that person. They're, they're giving my friends problems. And then I can dwell on that. And I can get all upset with that. And I can get all stressed out. I'd love to just rip their heads off. And then I get all steamed. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking. Meanwhile, they have a conversation. Their family member comes and, and calls them up and says, you know what, I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. I said what I said. Sorry I did what I did. Would you please forgive me? They say, oh, yeah, absolutely fine. Prayer's answered. Praise God. They forget to tell me. <laughs> so that I can clear it. But I shouldn't have been defiled anyway. I shouldn't have been defiled anyway. And so I'm offended at another person's supposed offense. But they weren't, they weren't offended. They just needed a situation. They, had, they kept love going on in the whole situation. That's what, and, and faith works by love. So if you don't have love going on, you can pray about whatever you want, and it'll never happen. Because faith works by love, the Bible says. So if you're not walking in love towards someone, no matter how much you pray, it will not change the situation. You're a scallywag. Amen. Because you've got issues. And so you have to love the person. So their, their family member forgives, and, and, and they get it all taken care of. Meanwhile, back at the farm, I'm not at the farm. I like the farm, though. Gyra Farms is like an amazing place. You need to go out there and visit the farm. Plan to spend the whole day and help them out. Hallelujah. But the thing is, is that, so, so back at the church, meanwhile, I've got this offense going because of something they said, and, and I see, you know, them as, I, they're, 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 these people are being attacked that I like. Meanwhile, everything's resolved, everything's fine, whatsoever. And then they bring the person around a couple months later. I see them, and I'm like, take them out. Let him break a leg. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, don't get into Christian voodoo. Okay? 
If you're going to pray for somebody, pray the blessing of the Lord on them. Don't pray evil on anyone or you are in witchcraft. That is witchcraft. When you pray, God, I ask that you would just, just take them out, God. May they break an arm. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Just pray the blessing of the Lord. Lord, minister to them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. I do that when people come against me. I just pray the blessing of the Lord. Bless them, Lord. Just bless them. I don't understand it, but bless them. I don't agree with it, but bless them. Amen. Isaiah 26, 3, you'll keep him in perfect peace. Say perfect peace. peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Not whose mind visits you. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And then Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious or worried about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all of your understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Woo! It'll guard my heart. It'll guard my mind. But I've got to take it to the Lord. I've got to say, Lord, I give this all to you. The devil will always try to feed your thoughts with a particular thing and have you dwell on that thing. If it's an illness, well, that person got sick. That person got sick. I'll probably get sick too. No, shut your mouth. Don't say that. Amen. The more you think about it, the more fearful you get. And fear attracts the attack of the enemy. I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. I don't fear any evil. I don't know what's going on around the world with anybody else, but it's not coming to my house. Amen. I don't have any issues like that. Because if you have fear, it makes it so much easier for the enemy to attack you. Fear just enlarges enlarges the target on you. That's what fear does. It enlarges the target that the enemy is able to see. Oh. It used to be hard for me to, to, to kind of figure out where they are. Oh, but now I see that. That's my zone right there. That's the fear zone. It's like, it magnifies that person in the eyes of the enemy. Fear. Romans 12, 2. Just so you know, it's vital to take control of the mind so you don't fall into his schemes. You don't get into bondage. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? renewing of your mind the renewing the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that's what God has for you you need to get your mind renewed you need to get in the word of God you need to get in his presence you need to worship him not just at church worship him at home worship him in your car worship him when you're when you're working in the yard Worship him when you're, when, you're, when you're cooking a meal in the kitchen. Worship him when you're cleaning your house. Yet some of you, if you clean your house, you'd have more time to worship. <laughs> Even something brief, making your bed. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I've never done this before, but praise God. <laughs> Gives me three minutes to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just get in his presence. Well, you know, while you're ironing your clothes. Oh, that's something they have also. Because it comes called an iron, an ironing board. Anyway, you iron. But you have to be careful when you're doing that because you might get so blessed, you might just leave the, leave the iron and just start dancing around, praising God, and coming back and you have holy garments. Hallelujah. <laughs> <clears throat> but find time to get in the presence of God, to praise him to worship him, to get in his word. Everybody here needs to do that. That's one way that you can reset your mind. You can renew it. Make it all new. Make it all new. Get some new stuff. Please join us for a time of worship. Shadow 
Please stay tuned. The message will continue after this testimony. And what, 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 what happened? What happened to you when you were, you were watching the service? It was on a Sunday night? Yeah, it was a uh, Sunday night at like 9 o'clock at night. I'd never heard of this place before. And um, God just uh, showed me out of nowhere uh, his presence through uh, Todd over here, through him. And uh, he was over here uh, preaching about keeping the oil or the uh, lantern, lantern filled with uh, oil and on fire. And he went around, you know, filling people with the presence of uh, God, the Spirit. Got to like the, got like to like around over there to like the very end point over there and uh, point at the camera and say, "Be filled in the mighty name of Jesus." And I'm coming to you live. And I just stuck my hands up in the air, started spoken, sp speaking in tongues for the first time ever. And uh, just. Yeah. And it is, it's just crazy what he can do. It's supernat supernatural, amazing. Just, just thank, thank you, God. You, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you were and over then, in Crossville, correct? Crossville, like. Amen. Two, and, yeah. and you went to a non spirit filled church there, correct? Yeah, yeah the okay. ba Baptist church. A Baptist church there. You'd never been filled with the Holy Ghost. No. Nope, but never. you knew that you were evidently hungry for more, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, every and day, every I second, still don't know second. how in the world he found us on YouTube, but he did. And yeah. he just got hungry. And so God is just opening people's eyes, saying, hey, here, get filled, get filled. He'd been coming back every service, all the way from Crossville. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Never the same again. Never. I, just, Never. I pray for anyone watching now. Uh, yeah, just, to, you know, just pray for him just right pray, now. Just pray, just pray, pray, pray for him right there. Look at the camera and pray for him. And just, pray, just pray that you can just get in touch with God like he did. On, just like, stretch your hand out to him and pray. Just thank, thank you, just thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for using me to just, you know, pray to these people right now. Thank you, Lord. Just pray that you can just see what's going on and look, what, what God's doing in, in, in this this world, in this church, and this everywhere. It's not just here; it's everywhere. It's yes. all around the world. Amen. It's everywhere. There's, thank there's you, Jesus. amazing things He's doing. And I just pray for anyone watching this. Woo. So just take so, that right now, you that are watching, in the comfort of your own home, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor's message will continue next week, but please join us for a time of Holy Ghost ministry. I want you to bow your heads, would you please? Hallelujah. I've shared what I need to today, and I'm so thankful for the presence of God. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit working here today in this place but he's he's speaking to our hearts he's speaking to different ones that are here today and I'd like you to just bow your heads close your eyes here just before we leave today with no one moving around except the worship teams coming up here that's all not time to get up and go to the restroom or go to your car this is the most most holy time where God is speaking to people's hearts here 
But if you're here today and the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, and he's saying, you know, you, you need to make some changes. There needs to be action on your part. You need to return to me. You need to return to my word. You need to return to my ways. And if that's you and you're a believer here, and you know there has to be some adjustments for my life to go in the correct direction, then I'd like to pray with you today. Let's pray and ask the Lord to do a fresh work inside of you, inside of your heart, so then your mind can be renewed as it needs to. He's come to set the captive free. He's come to set the captive free. Sometimes we're just captivated with our own thoughts. We can't go forward with the things that God wants to. Because we're just full of ourselves. We're full of our own ways. And then the enemy will even come against us and say, this is the way you are. You're like this. You're like that. Meanwhile, God sees you in a completely different way. God loves you. Everyone here, I want you to know, God loves you. And he has such a high way for you to walk in. His ways, his plans, his purposes. But you've got to start thinking his thoughts. Start allowing his kingdom to do a work inside of you. To be fully established inside of you. So that he can use you. You can be used in a supernatural way to see people set free. Well, I just want to tell you one way, that, one very effective way is you could be used in a supernatural way. And you'll always be used every time. Get involved in our prison ministry. Amen. Get involved in our prison ministry. You're going to talk with people. Minister to people who need to be set free. We're seeing miracles in there every week. Miracles, transformations. Because they come hungry. They're not forced to come to these. They come because they want to. They know I need a change in my life. It's not like going to church. It's a totally different thing. You might even have more bound people in a church than you do in a prison. But they'll never tell you that. But I want to tell you, find a way that God can use. Find a way that he can flow through you. In the local church, get involved. Say, God, use me. Use me to be a blessing. Use me to speak your word. Use me, Lord, to encourage people, to build them up, to bless them. I want to be used by God in a supernatural way. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? Father, I command the blessing of the Lord upon each one here in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for your manifest presence being with them throughout this entire day, throughout this whole week that we have just started today. I thank you for opening up their eyes and doing a work inside of them in the name of Jesus. I speak liberty. I speak blessing. I speak complete provision into their lives in the name of Jesus. I speak breakthrough into their lives. And I thank you, Lord, for doing it. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I honor you in every area in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Pastor has a few more things he'd like to share. I'd like to give you an invitation right at this time to allow God to do a work inside of your heart and in your life. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life to be your Lord and your Savior, I'd like for you to pray with me right now. Or maybe you're watching and at one time you had a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you've walked away from that relationship. I want to tell you right now, the love of God is drawing you back in. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit and the arms of God would just enfold you right now, that you would understand that he loves you and he's drawing you back into his presence. If right now as you're watching this program, you feel the presence of God upon you, I want you to just stop whatever you're doing 
And I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me. Change me. Make me new. Lord Jesus, I declare you are my Savior. Come into my life. and Do your work inside of me. I give you all of me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me and for loving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me right now, I want to let you know as a minister of the gospel, you are saved. You confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He's come into your life. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. We'd love to hear from you. If you would just call that number that's on your screen right now, someone would be happy to pray with you. We have men and women who are on the phones who are ready to pray with you, whether it's salvation, maybe you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit, maybe you need a miracle or, or a healing in your body, a breakthrough somewhere in your life. We love you and we wanna pray with you. And so right now, just take the time to call that number on the screen. God bless you. Thanks again for watching today. And as we close this broadcast out, we want to just give you an invitation to invest in the gospel. If this program today has touched your heart, if it's blessed your life, if you, you've drawn closer to Jesus, then I want to give you an opportunity to just obey God. Ask him, Lord, what can I do to help this ministry go forward? We're here in Johnson City, but we're reaching throughout the entire Tri-Cities area and beyond. We have community outreaches going on continually, soul winning throughout the area. We're here to see the lost saved and for the kingdom of God established, not just in word, but in demonstration and in power. And so we're taking the word of God everywhere we can. Here in this area, we're going into other states, even other nations, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so ask the Lord what he would have for you to do and then just obey. We so welcome you to watch these programs. And there is no, there's nobody trying to twist your arm or anything like that. But we just want you to know that God loves you, has a wonderful plan for your life. Come and get involved in what God is doing here in the Tri-Cities area. We would love to see you. In fact, you can just get in your car right now and you can drive right on over to our service. We're still going on. So no matter how you're dressed or anything, come on over. We'd love to see you. We'd love to meet you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.